Welcome back to the channel. Uh, today I went by my local uh, tractor supply company and uh, I uh, bought me a uh, rear tine tiller and uh, it's a the Earthquake Victory uh, rototiller and uh, it's a rear tine and one of the things that uh, draw me to the tiller is the fact that it has solid wheels so there's no uh, you don't have to worry about tires going flat on the tiller. So I'm, we're going to take this uh, box out and put this dude together and y'all come along with me. About 170 pounds, so I would normally take this out of the truck with the bucket loader, but uh, I have broken my uh, tractor. I got a part coming in for it. You'll see a video about that in, in the near future. So we're going to just manhandle this dude off here. What draws me to it was the fact that the tires are solid and you don't ever have to worry about the tires going bad. I could see these lasting, you know, years and years and years. There we go. I was looking for that. There's the uh, instruction manual and all the boats. All right, I'm going to go ahead and get this thing out of the uh, box and get it uh, ready to assemble, and then I'll bring you back, guys back in when I get it out of the box. All right, the box is tore open so that I can get to it a little bit better, and, and I'm going to go ahead and kind of deviate from the instructions of the fact I'm going to put the handlebar on first so I have a little bit better control uh, of, uh, you know, moving it around. My directions said it would take a 17 millimeter and a 16 millimeter wrench. However, uh, after looking it over, mine takes a 17 millimeter for the nut and then it takes a 13 millimeter for the bolt. I guess they've changed the head on the bolt. No big deal. It's something I mentioned. When you're tightening these bolts down here on the, on the handles, just keep in mind that. Uh, you know, this is a square tube, and if you crank down on it, you can crush the tube, and then you'll never be able to get it tight. So the, you can't over tighten it on these things. Just keep that in mind. All right, let's see if we can get this thing up and get the wheels put on it so we can release or roll it around off this package. All right, each wheel has one of these pins here, and uh, you have to line the pins up to uh, correspond to, or correspondingly to the axle, so that it will uh, actually pull. Like such. These lynch pins can go two different positions. Right now I have them through the wheel and through the axle, which makes them, uh, you know, drive. It'll actually pull. Then you have the, uh, the other option, which is to push the wheel further back and just push the pin through the axle and it lets the wheel free roll, but without the, the wheel coming off. All right, now we're gonna install the sides of the uh, the chiller here, the shields, and uh, it, it takes uh, two uh, 10 millimeter wrenches, or you could use two, uh, you know, a 10 millimeter wrench and a socket. All right, now we're going to put on the uh, the side pieces. Now, the best I can understand the direction, of course, they're kind of vague. Uh, let's see if we can get this figured out. This piece goes up under, so we're going to take a small flat washer. Put through the top. We got a 
larger flat washer and a nut. That's a, it's a lock nut. And it's going to go through the bottom. So let's see if we can we can do this. This might be a better way of doing this. Yeah, I believe there's a better way of doing this. I believe we can do this from the bottom. Alright, there he is. We said the first hole or bolt would be the hardest one to get on. You have a mechanic tell me if you're gonna be a, a real mechanic, you gotta learn to see with your fingers. That is so true. Alright, we got the first one on. When now the extra the other one shouldn't be near as hard. Say that now. We'll find out in a moment, won't we? Tell you what, it is one hot May day. I think today is like May the 28th, and it is about. Uh, I want to think it's about uh, 87 already, and it's lunch time. It is one hot muggy. Day. We got a tropical storm coming in. Alright, I got all three of those started. That's basically what it'll be. I'll tighten these all down and get back with you. Just a warning uh, to let you know that the uh, you know the engine does not come with oil. The transmission has oil in it. I have checked the transmission and it is it meets the requirements. Uh, this thing uh, uses some, some pretty specific oil in the transmission and uh, make sure you don't use the GL5 uh, you know double zero grease like mystic grease uh, or GL6 it takes GL4 and it makes a note that if you use anything higher than GL4 that it will soften the bronze components inside the transmission so make sure you use the right uh, the right oil in the back end and uh, now we're gonna go ahead and fill the engine up with oil and uh, get ready to put some gas in this thing and see if it'll run all right, this little engine comes with a, a Kohler engine on it. Uh, I'm not disappointed with the Kohler. They're pretty good engines. Uh, I've had good luck with them. It comes with a, supposedly the right amount of oil in this uh, bottle to, uh, I think it said, uh, oh, I just read it and I can't remember now, like 0.6 something quarts of oil. And uh, it uses... Uh, well, for our for our climate, we, it says it can use 10W30 or SAE30. Uh, this particular oil that come with is an SAE30, if I'm not. Yeah, no, this is 10W30. So uh, I'll probably use this until it breaks in, and then move back over to a, uh, a synthetic oil. All right, it says 0.63 uh, uh, quarts, or you know, 0.6 liters. According to the manual, it says this should be just about correct so we'll pour this in real slow and, and then check it periodically sitting out here in the sun in this black container this oil is like water I'll put about 10 hours on this thing and I'll like I said I'll switch it out to a synthetic oil Let's let that drain in and we'll, we'll do a quick check. I see oil at the at the bottom here. Yep. It's on the dipstick towards the top of the hash marks. So uh, plenty of oil. Like I said, I'm going to change it out. Uh, I'm slightly downhill here. So it probably would be better if I set it up like such to check the old. I'm going to go ahead and do that. Yeah, that's much more level. Let's take a look at it now see what it looks like. Oh yeah, it'll take some more oil. It'll take the rest of it. Make sure that you level it out before you. Well, that 
looks pretty good. I can see it in there. So we'll go ahead and check it. Yep, we're on the dipstick almost to the top. So that's that's good. We'll tighten this down, move back down, we'll put some gas in it, and uh, we'll try it out and see what it does. All right, I went ahead and filled the tiller up with uh, fuel, and uh, I went ahead and put just a little touch of stable in it, even though it's not going to set for a long, I'll probably till every few, you know, four, five, six days, but I put a little stable in it. I just don't trust the fuel nowadays as much as I used to about uh, turning the varnish and the ethanol that's in it uh, nowadays, if you can't find uh, non-ethanol fuel, which is pretty hard to find around here, uh, you know, you get into that issue where it, it corrodes. And these or these uh, carburetors and stuff nowadays are meant to, to run the ethanol. It even says you can run uh, ethanol in it, but, uh, you know, ethanol fuel in it. But, you know, just something to think about. Let's see if this thing will start. All right. Strong choke. I'm kind of embarrassed here. I uh, tilled my, uh, I plowed my corn about uh, 12 or 13 days ago, and this is how it looks 12 or 13 days. I went on vacation, so I wasn't here to take care of my garden, and in just that short amount of time, this grass went nuts. And this ground is well fertilized. And the corn looks good, but if I don't get this grass taken care of, it's going to uh, overtake my corn and take up moisture out of the, take the moisture out. So we're going to give this tiller a, a, a good uh, a good try today. See what you think. garden I went ahead and uh, took a break and I, I found the the handles to be setting you know the settings on the handles to be uncomfortable uh, so I went back to the shop and uh, let the thing cool down and I went ahead and raised it to I turned these little metal brackets these are these uh, wedge style brackets here uh, look, they look like little uh, wedges uh, are reversible you can Put it down really short, or really the, or the other way for a really short person, or you can rotate them around this way for you know probably an average American person. Um, so uh, uh, there's once you turn rotate these around, there's there's basically three settings. It's straight out, and then one one more a little bit higher, and then one really high. Uh, I went ahead and just went to the middle this time, and I may regret that because it's really hard to judge uh, this thing while it's not in the ground. Uh, but I went ahead and, and changed it around to the uh, or put it in the middle and uh, uh, I, I'm going to try it. I think it might be the, the sweet spot for me and then we'll go from there. All right, here's a, a look at uh, this morning what I did and that's just one, you know, one pass going. Actually, it's two passes in that aisle right there or in that in between those rolls of corn and it did a really good job. Um, and it wasn't set really correctly at that point either. So 
uh, as I learn the the tiller, I think uh, you know I, I'll figure it out. I would imagine that it's better, uh, you know, the, depending on the types of soil. This soil here is very clayey with a lot of sand, and when it when it rains and uh, dries, it turns almost to like a concrete on top. And uh, you know, but this thing did a pretty good job of busting it up. Still got quite a bit of weeds I got to clean out, especially in my beans. These these this these uh this grass just went nuts while I was gone. So that's something I'll be working over the next few days. Uh, hopefully it won't rain too much in this tropical storm that's coming in tomorrow. And I can get back out here. So I'm going to try to do as much today as I can. This is the low side of my garden. This is the best soil that I have. Uh, now this winter I'm going to go ahead and take all of the leaves and that all of, out of my yard and maybe my neighbor's yard. And go ahead and bring them around and put them in the garden evenly dispersed and till them up with a high and then put a high nitrogen uh, fertilizer on them so that they will you know uh, decompose through the winter but you can see on this this side of the garden this is the uh, lower side of the garden it has a much better soil and, and it just tills better and it doesn't uh, get as hard the only drawback to it is it doesn't get as much sunlight you can see that my okra is not doing very well on this end but on the other end where it gets full sunlight it's starting to really pop through so I, I don't know that it's going to make all the way down through here, but we'll see. But if you know anything about okra, that that okra uh, is on the other end will make once it starts making. You have to cut it every three days. And just for me and my wife, that'll be uh, uh, that'll be plenty. But I wouldn't mind having an extra, you know, a, a little bit extra, you know, to give away. Here is a look at the, the dirt uh, when there's nothing in the way and you've got the time to let it, you know, till. I mean, it is absolutely tilling fine. This is good dirt on this side of the garden. Not as uh, much sand and clay in it. And it looks really good. It really, really does. A, it makes it really fine. I don't know that I could get my tractor to do it this good. Uh, this is absolutely like powdered. Looks like we might get some rain here pretty soon. I hear some thunder off in the distance. But I'm going to go ahead and change the handles to the, the highest position. I'm going to say if you're a, uh, you know, a, a almost six foot tall guy or, or six foot tall or higher, go ahead and just start out at the highest position because when you have the tiller in the uh, lowest position, you know, as, as far as it's in the dirt, as far down as it'll go, uh, then you're having to bend, you know, you'd have to bend over like what I just did. So I'm going to go ahead and move it up to the next highest or the very, very highest position. And, and anything after that, I'm going to have to make a special bracket or something. All right, now I've got the tiller in the uh, highest position for the handle. And it, it, it's just, it does feel much comfortable, much more comfortable. Looks like I'm going to get rained out, but hey, we'll see what happens. I'd like to take time to uh, thank you for watching my channel. And... Uh, uh, putting up with my shenanigans and if you uh, like what I do give me a thumbs up and uh, please subscribe